thing? Is that what we're doing? Is that what's happening? Yeah. Okay. You looked too hey, aggressively you... expectant. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, I no, <laughs> no, I don't want it. <laughs> welcome uh, to Whiskey Vault. You're welcome to take that box with the socks in it. Alex. Get it out of here. Okay. It, oh, is this the Israeli company? Yeah. I recognize this the bottle. This is a couple ones we haven't tried before. These are both gifts from patron Saint David Moskowitz. David Moskowitz, you patron Saint of Whiskey. Okay, so we have a peated version, which we'll do second, mm -hmm. um, and we have a red wine, red cask. wine cask. Yeah. So they're using. Now remember, these guys. Is that forty-six percent? Yeah. These guys were in Tel Aviv. Yeah. They are using. They're making malt whiskey, sort of in the Scottish tradition, mm -hmm. and with the red wine cask, they are using wine from the wineries in okay. Israel. So I'm going to tell you what I remember, and it may be not accurate. It's been a while since I tried the first thing. I remember it being something that I'm excited to try because it's always cool whenever one of these countries that doesn't do a lot of whiskey production throws their hat in the ring. They mm -hmm. start doing something. But I also remember being a little underwhelmed. Yeah, me too. Okay. So let's see. And they didn't say which red wines, just some red wines. Mm -hmm. They're using a big old pot still. Yeah. A couple of pot stills. At least three years old. Mm-hmm was aged in the finest ex-bourbon and Israeli wet, red, red wine cast. Yeah. yeah, so it's Israeli wine, giving it fruity flavors, rich aromas, and a special deep natural matured under the Tel Aviv sun. Okay, I am getting the wine for sure. The jammy notes are way bigger than the young malt notes. Are you getting kind of like a, a char quality to it? Mm -hmm. A little bit, but that's definitely back there. My yeah. first ex my first impact is there's a honey oats and caramel and then uh, and then some like just jam like a multi like, like a multi caramel I'm the, like one of those four berry jams that you get on toast okay I'm struggling to find the fruitiness I believe you I think it's there but the red wine impact mm -hmm. that's what I mean yeah that's what I'm it's just a little bit more candied okay it's definitely got some sweet character to it. But it is sort of mulchy, a little bit grainy, but not, doesn't smell super young. Mm -hmm. A little yeah, bit vibrant. It smells like you're not quite fully matured, but you're definitely f far away from new make. It's kind of like the juvenile level. Yeah, because the nose is a little thin. Yeah. Of, it could uh, just be because it's maturation. so low. Mm, there is a char note to this. Yeah, there is. Almost Ooh. like it yeah. was peated and then, or lightly peated maybe. Yeah. Because there is a There's definitely a smoke element. Note. Mm -hmm. hmm. Huh. Well, they don't mention anything about it being peated. Yeah. This one, though. Yeah, the, I know. That one elements is. elements is, but... Well, they're both elements. So this is uh, one of their lines okay. is called elements, and it's sort of an experimental... So they just drop the peated, and in its place, they put red wine cast. Right. So they probably have some peat going on in here as well. No, they've got a... There's like a Dude, shit ton of things, what is including unpeated. What is the smoky thing? I about? think it's peat, but I don't think it's That's peat. what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I don't think it's strong enough to be like no. a peated whiskey. All I'm it, saying is the peaty character that's coming from that, we're finding some smoke character. It's more of a char than a straight up scotch peating. Try the smoky But we're because... finding it in here, and I'm saying on the label, where they had peat on this label, they replaced it with red wine cask. So yeah. apparently red wine was the... The hero differentiator on this, but it's still some recognizable smoke character. This is what you poured right here? This is peated. So keep in mind, the peated isn't what's the core range. Hmm? The core range is Was it what we had originally? This. That's what's Elements. core. Peated is new, just like red wine is new. Okay. So uh, they have unpeated. They've got some port finishes. Can I tell you I find more smoke in the red wine than yeah. I do the peated? <laughs> on the nose. On the nose. Yeah. Uh, it may be because I'm already, I've acclimated to whatever smoky in the character is in this. I'm trying to find it in the nose of this one. Yeah, but I'm I didn't find smoke in this one until we tasted it. Was, it. it was char. It's definitely, the, the, the smoke came from the angle of a char barrel, but it was definitely a little bit more peaty, savory, okay. smoky on Can the nose. Can I say I feel like they got these backwards? On the nose, I'm not surprised. I still haven't tasted this one. Taste it. But on the nose, if I had to say which one's peated, which one's not peated, it would be totally flipped. So weird. Are these labeled backwards? Okay. The only element of peatiness that I can find is right when the finish begins. Mm -hmm. Right when it starts to 
trail off and it gives you this tiniest amount. But on the red wine, the peat oh, is it, more present. It shows up, yeah. I mean, we're not talking like a smoke show. This isn't- It's not Lafroy. No, 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 not even close. On the peated version, it presents it. as a little more pepper, a light pepper instead of a smoke. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the red wine version, it presents as an ashy smoke. Yeah, it's already second sip after it acclimated to these flavors. It's already more difficult to find the peat. That on just this. that little that little fleck of peatiness. What is happening? So <laughs> we put Are it this we... way: the peat aside, yeah, smoke aside, it's a good aside. whiskey. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I it think tastes I... a little bright. Yeah, I think it's kind of the juvenile level of maturation. It's not quite uh, a grown ass adult, but it's far from being too young and punchy. And I'm, I'm going to see if water makes a big difference on mine, and if it does, I'll, I'll pour it in Did yours. You put it in this one? But I want you, I did it in both. Okay. I want you to keep the original first. No, yeah, yeah. Because I'm telling you, the more I go back okay. to this, the more it I woke can up find. The peat. Oh, in here? Mm hmm. Okay, I need a little water. Just, it, but now I woke it up more in the red wine one. It opened up peat in both. Yeah. But more so in the red wine finish. Mm -hmm. I don't think people realize I've had a chair here for a long time. I haven't bothered to use it. Oh, you can stay on camera that way. Yeah, yeah you can. Hi. It makes me taller, too. <laughs> well, I mean, if I, good posture. and then <laughs> With a good posture, I can still, <laughs> still lap you. <laughs> okay. What are you on right now? The peated. Ironically, okay. I think you should drink the peated one first. Yeah. It's less peat than the wine one. But it is a little more peppery. I don't dislike what the water did. I think the water mm -hmm. was a good add. I gotta say, of these, the red wine is smokier and a superior product. I, I actually like the flavor combos that mm -hmm. are being created yeah. in the red wine label one. Although, I'm still not certain that they weren't labeled backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, they can't be. There's gotta be. No, no, I There's know, no way. I know exactly what you're basing it on. 100%, yeah. I'm right there with you. Uh, this one is simpler though. It is simpler. I think they're both not bad. I'm not amazed, I'm not blown away. We've had much nicer whiskeys, um, yeah. but we've had way worse whiskeys as well. This is kind of like you know, if, the middle of the pack times a, a kind of quality. It's, it's respectable, it's not bad. If I, I released this and said, this is the next single mom, mm -hmm. and try it, what do you think? Would you be like, that's okay, it's a little watery. No, I say well, we need some more time in the barrel. Yeah, me too. Yeah, probably a used barrel. So, so it didn't uh, get too tannic. Yeah. Yeah, because they're also um, in a hotter climate. Mm hmm And so they got to be careful, just like we do. Yeah. But that's so weird. It's competent all the way around. Yeah. No, it's solid production. I'm gonna stop trying to figure out the peat situation. Yeah. I'm because gonna blend them and see what happens. Like the, the, the labels really do feel like they should have been switched. <laughs> Not that we're finding a tremendous amount of red wine influence. You said there's a little bit more of like to a. To me, it's a little jammier. Yeah. But it's really subtle. Yeah. Kyle S. 01, is Valcona still considered craft? They're a pretty good size now with distribution everywhere. Yeah, so we get this question all the time. At what point does something stop something being craft? craft? Yeah. One, uh, some people say it's owners. Yeah. The moment you have outside corporate ownership, okay. like, you know, Pernod buys you out or Diageo right. buys you out, or, right. or is it the moment that you take massive investment money? But that's just called owning a business, right? Right. Most people who start a business take some kind of investment because a bank is considered, bank loans an investment, right? right? Or does it have to do with how much whiskey you produce? Like the size of your stills? That's because an interesting could you be question. Craft, but like, well, because you'll see the word craft mm -hmm. on any number of monstrous brands. Yeah. Putting it on the labels. Like if they're small batch, like, craft whiskey. Like, yeah, okay. It's, when you have over... Okay, how about barrel count? If you have over a certain amount of barrels in your warehouse, right. are you no longer craft? Mm. Right? So if you're crawling into the five-figure barrel count sure. instead of four or three... So this is off the top of my head. I have a thought. But before we get into that... What is your definition? I'd be interested to yeah. see what the MBs think. What craft is? Define in your terms what is the definition of craft. There's no legal definition. Can we all agree that anybody at from McAllen to Andalusia right. who works at it, let's assume that they care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's assume that they care about quality mm -hmm. and that they're not just punching a clock. Right. So that may not be true at some big distilleries, but we're not going to argue that point. Right. So let's just put as our baseline assumption, everybody involved cares about what they're making. Right. Take that off the table. So I'm going to float out a, 
a raw position just to stir the conversation. Let's say something is no longer considered craft. If they have been bought by a corporation, okay. they've been bought by another company, and the total revenue of that original craft distillery is less than 25% of that corporation's overall revenue. Because uh -huh. you can, like, as a small distiller, you can get bought out by another company. It doesn't necessarily make it yeah, Diageo I mean, like, like, or Pernod. Andalusia could buy Crowded Barrel. Yeah. That doesn't well, make Andalusia McAllen. So a big corporation, if your revenue presence in their portfolio is less than 25% of that portfolio, yeah, well, and if it's more than 25%, maybe you weren't craft to begin with. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, maybe you were already that big. Because for me, there's some type of corporate involvement that makes it no longer craft. But yeah, when, businesses in general, I mean, most of the craft distilleries, you're going to have, like, investors, some buddies. Somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's if, tough, isn't it? You know it? what, I'll tell this you right now. This is why there's no definition, because it's really hard. And you, anytime you say, here's the rules, yeah. you can find exceptions sure. in your head. Yeah, yeah. Instantly, you can find exceptions. I think the moment a pantsuit appears, <laughs> it's no longer craft. <laughs> Suits in general at a distillery? Yeah. Yeah, unless you're, you know, for some sort of, like, formal event at the, tasty, at the, at the distillery. A black tie affair. Oh, uh, yeah. Jerk. Eichmann's. Hey guys, just an easy question. Once in a while, it's good to move the bottles to keep the cork wet. Yes. How many months does it take before this is needed? Lots of love. Kind of depends on the cork. Uh, so if, if it's, it's synthetic, it doesn't matter. If it's synthetic, it doesn't matter. If it's real, we try to do like, I would say six months is maybe too far. But look, in what, there's plenty of ones in here that haven't been touched in a year plus. Uh, what we try to do is, in our rules with, the, with any of the psalms who are in here, mm -hmm. is as you handle bottles, yeah, yeah. at least give the cork a good soak before you open it. Yeah. Because what will often happen is that a cork will dry out, and you won't find out until you try to open it. And so you'll get, I, this happened to me last week, mm -hmm. you'll get one of these, right? Mm -hmm. Look at that. If we haven't touched this. Yeah, that's pretty crispy. That's pretty, and you might dry. So one of the good rule of thumb is like before you open it, just Turn it up for you know a minute or yeah. so and let it soak the cork a little before you try to shift that cork. You should. So there's another psalm training class this week, uh, level three. Yeah. You should say okay for your graduation ceremony. We're all gonna go down and flip bottles upside down <laughs> and stand there. <laughs> yeah. All three thousand. Yeah. I think I remember me being a little bit more underwhelmed with the very first bottling of this. These are better. These, I think. I think these are a step up from my memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think these are better, but it's still not blown away. And yeah, the blend of the two is not superior to this. Okay, here's fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me and fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink with us.